Good evening, everyone. I'm Jenny Putnam, Chair of the Voter Services Committee of the Falmouth League of Women Voters, and I'd like to welcome you to Candidates Night. First, I want to thank FCTV's dedicated staff and volunteers for helping us make this evening possible. You'll have a chance to hear the candidates' views both this evening and in rebroadcast before the election on May 18th. You can find FCTV's schedule for rebroadcasting on their website and in the Falmouth Enterprise. A word about the League. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. We're nonpartisan because we never support a candidate or a political party. However, we are political because we take positions on public policy issues based on our study of independently verified facts. You can learn more about the League of, by visiting us online at www.lwvf.org. Candidates Night brings together candidates for contested offices and provides a forum for them to present their views to the public. Tonight, you will be hearing from two candidates running for Falmouth Select Board. Because there was only one contested race, we have arranged for the chair of the Select Board, Megan English Braga, to review the roles and responsibilities of the governing bodies whose candidates will be on the ballot this May. Pre-recorded statements by candidates in uncontested races will be shown following tonight's program. The League thanks the candidates for the time and energy, thoughtfulness and civility that they bring to this event. I also want to thank my colleagues on the League's Voter Services Committee for designing this event and putting together its many pieces in these challenging times. Our moderator tonight is Mindy Todd, CAI's award-winning radio journalist. We thank her for once again volunteering her services. Mindy will ask the candidates questions that have been composed by the League, as well as questions submitted to the League's website by Falmouth residents. Finally, please remember, democracy is not a spectator sport. Vote. Vote by mail, in person early, or in person on May 18th. You can apply to vote early by mail and learn how, when, and where to vote early in person, by visiting the town's website. Whichever way you choose, please join FCTV staff and League of Women Voters Falmouth and be a voter. And now I'll turn the program over to Mindy Todd. Thank you, Jenny. Just some guidelines to go over. Um, the questions, as uh, we mentioned, uh, have been put together by the League of Women Voters Voter Service Committee. Each candidate will be given two minutes uh, to answer uh, each of the questions and there'll be two minutes for closing comments at the end. A timekeeper will be visible and will hold up a time sign uh, to keep us on track. Uh, the public has been invited to submit questions as uh, Jenny just mentioned. Um, before I introduce the candidates uh, for select board, I have been asked to read this letter from Robert Miscali. After much thought and discussion with family and friends, I have decided to ask Michael Palmer to remove my name from the ballot for the election on May 18th. When I decided to run for the select board, I thought then and think now that I have the experience and qualifications to be a productive member of the board. However, my entry into the race was late and by that time, a number of residents had already committed their support to one candidate or the other. As a result, I feel it is best for the town for me to step aside at this time and let the voters choose between the two other candidates. I offer both Ms. Scott Price and Mr. Halen good health and good luck, signed Robert Miscali. So that leaves us two candidates, uh, and they are Michael Halen and Anjali Scott Price, and we welcome them both. Welcome, welcome, good to see you both this evening. Um, so we want to start with questions and we'll start in alphabetical order. So Michael Halen, I'm going to start with you. What positive lessons have you learned from uh, uh, other communities' responses this past year that will uh, bring to your work as a member of the select board? Um, thank you for having me. Uh, first, Jenny, Mindy, League of Women Voters, FCTV, um, and Anale. I think I got that right. I hope I got that right. Um, and thank you, Robert. Um, one thing I've learned this last year is uh, when COVID hit, um, there's a giant gap between uh, technology of who can use technology and who has a difficult time doing so. I spent the last uh, few months as much time as I could helping some elderly people in town um, sign up for COVID vaccinations, um, testing, all that stuff. I know other people in town are doing it. Um, 
I appreciate that. And everyone who needs vaccines but can't get on the website appreciates it as, as well. Um, in Rainham, where I work, our health agent got MIIS certified, um, talked to the state, and ran a um, community vaccination clinic at my place of work in my parking lot uh, with the state uh, COVID vaccinations. So that is something that I would like to see happening. Some kind of a, uh, either Scott McGann, um, the, the health agent or uh, someone in town hall to help elderly residents who have a difficult time getting vaccines, sign them up like a lot of us residents are already doing, get them their vaccines. And I know that the state did stop the uh, supply of the vaccinations but you know, let's get back onto that. Let's try to get that happening. In Rainham, they're doing uh, vaccinations for homebound individuals, which is a huge thing. I helped a couple of 85 year old people um, get vaccines. It was difficult because they don't drive. So setting up driving, setting up the vaccines, all that stuff. I would like to work together as a community, get that done. Because once that gets done, we can get back to normal. Thank you. Thank you, Anjali Scott Price. What positive lessons have you learned from the community's responses in this past year that you will try to bring to your work as a member of the board of selectmen? Thank you for the question, Mindy. And thank you for the League of Women Voters for hosting this event. Thank you, Mindy, for, for hosting and providing your services. I wanna thank FCTV for hosting this live and for the people of Falmouth for participating. And to Mr. Halen, it's nice to meet you and thank you for being here as well. The positive lessons that I feel like I've learned are there's a few of them, starting with flexibility and adaptability. Uh, obviously we did not see COVID coming. We had to adapt our services, our community very quickly. The way that the teachers adjusted their curriculum to teach remotely, our police, firefighters and other town departments acted quickly to the needs of the people and the new regulations. I think those were all very important. Uh, maintaining communication was critical. I really applaud uh, Mr. Scott McGann for giving those weekly health updates that we're still receiving. I think those have been critical to keeping people up to date. And I really, I really appreciated the committee and the select board meetings being held virtually uh, so that there was no gap in our, our town services. Another thing that I think was um, quite remarkable and that Mr. Halen also touched on was the compassion of the people in this community. It was, it was absolutely beautiful to see people running errands for each other, doing grocery pickups, the Mass for Falmouth group that were making and donating masks and helping people get registered and transporting for the vaccine. So I'd like to bring all of those qualities to the select board. As an engineer, I'm all about preparing and making plans, but I also understand the need to be flexible and I am adaptable. I believe in communication. I actually co-host and co-produce a show on FCTV called The Conversation, where we talk. And um, I am a compassionate person and I plan to bring that to the select board as well. Thank you, uh, Anjali, we start with you this time. Which town issues should be the top priorities for the board in the year ahead? Well, I have been a member of the Falmouth Affordable Housing Committee for a while now. And I do think that affordable housing is something that we should focus a lot of our time and attention to. Affordable housing is not just an equity and justice issue. It's, it's about our economics. If we have people who are working here, that means that they're taking their wages from the people who visit Falmouth and the people who spend money in Falmouth, uh, but they're spending that money elsewhere. You're not gonna go grocery shopping uh, where you work if you live 45 minutes away. You're not gonna come back to Falmouth over the bridge on the weekends to spend money at a restaurant, you're gonna eat closer to home. And so I think it is incredibly important to our economy. And as I mentioned, a, a justice issue, the people who work in our town deserve to live here. The other issue that I would like to see us tackle is the opioid crisis. There's been a 20% increase in overdoses since the beginning of the pandemic. So it's a crisis, it's an issue that we are already facing and it's only been exacerbated by the pandemic. And so that again, I think is, is a equity, a justice issue, uh, but it's also about people of our community. I, I love Falmouth, I love the people of this community and I wanna see them be healthy and happy. I wanna see the children of this town be able to grow up with their parents and, and everyone in their family. And the opioid crisis unfortunately is taking away a lot of people in our family, excuse me, a lot of people in our community. And so I would like to see us tackle definitely affordable housing and the opioid crisis. Michael Hale, the same question. What town issues should be the top priorities uh, for the board in the year ahead? All right, town issues. Um, I'll get a list here. 
So hold on with me. Uh, the fire station. Let's get the fire station done. Uh, let's make sure that no one in town um, is far enough from a fire station where they, their loved ones, are in danger. Uh, it's been too long. Along with that, let's get the firefighter staffing to the right level. Um, it kind of goes hand in hand. Right now, we need to work on the staffing, get them fully staffed for 18 guys, 20 guys a shift. And then as that's happening, we build the fire station. The whole town is safe. The other thing, and I've talked to um, Open Cape Network and uh, the fiber stuff, this pandemic, um, my kids were remote a long time. I got a lot of gray hair from that as you know, everyone who has kids at home remote, it's difficult. Now we have high speed internet um, in our house and I need it for work. Some people don't. The Falmouth wide internet, fiber optics, high speed, you don't have to pay Comcast prices. Everyone has equal internet. Um, and then lastly, the fields. Um, I grew up here. I love this town. I remember playing baseball here for the Mets when I was seven years old. The fields haven't grown. We need more fields. We did studies years ago to get more fields. We have one. That's a good start. We need more stuff for our kids. And finally, I still have some time. Uh, 151. We did studies 10 years ago. It's dangerous. There's accidents there. We need to fix that road. Um, we need to stop doing studies, or at least once we do a study, let's do what the study says. Firefighters, fire stations, our kids, internet, fields, 151. There's more stuff, my time is up. Thank you. All right, Michael Halen, we start with you. How should the town's budget for the next year in terms of both revenue and expenditures reflect the impact of coronavirus on the Falmouth community? Um, well, as far as I heard that there should be level funding from the state, um, the big issue with our, our revenues coming in are the revenues from uh, tourist uh, attractions, uh, our restaurants, uh, that kind of thing. Um, what I would like to see happen uh, is the town to help out our local businesses. All during the pandemic, I'm friends with restaurant owners, ice cream owners, uh, construction people in town. They got hit hard. Um, I'm lucky enough that I have a job that uh, the pan I run a TV station, a nonprofit, I was working the whole time. It didn't affect me, but those small business owners got hit hard. I would like to see the town do something for them tax wise. Um, just, you know, defer taxes for a little bit, give them a, a, a break on, um, on that. Because if we don't help out these small businesses right now, then all that money that we were getting for years, if they go under, it's gone. It's our community. They're the people, our friends and our neighbors. Let's take care of them. And that's going to take care of us in the future. Okay. Angela, same question. How should the town's budget for next year in terms of both revenue and expenditures reflect the impact of coronavirus on the Falmouth community? Well, I think first we need to take a good look at our budgets and our revenues and make sure that we understand what the actual impacts are or what they have been on our, our revenue and our budgets and make the make the decisions accordingly. I agree with Mr. Halen that we definitely need to support our local businesses. They are the heart of our economy and they are what what sustain us. And so I think we need to look at the numbers. We need to see, are the numbers what we expected them to be? Or are they way different than what we expected them to be? And look at what these new revenue sources are going to be. We have a lot of people who have decided to stay in their summer homes year round now. What does that mean for our revenue sources? And so I think we need to take, in, take into consideration what we thought we were going to see and what we've actually seen and, and make those decisions accordingly. Angela this time, Anjali, sorry. Uh, should moving the town of Plymouth closer to be a green community? And if so, what specific measures should we take to move in that direction? A green, sorry, uh, a green community. Um, I think Fal Falmouth does have quite a bit of open space, quite a bit of green space. And I think one thing that we should do is figure out how we can conserve that, but also grow with our expanding community. We know that, as I mentioned, a lot of people who were only here usually during the summer have decided to live here year round, and we may see a greater influx of people. So we need to look at how we can maintain our spaces that we have, but also ac accommodate our growing community. Um, as far as how to do that, I'm an engineer. I'm all about doing the research. I'm all about studies. I'm all about understanding and having 
hearing from different people in the community, looking at feedback, and also looking at what other communities are doing that we may be able to, to look to as examples. Michael, same question. Should the town be moving closer to being a green community? And if so, what specific measures should we take to move in that direction? Just, I'm going to answer this differently because I think um, we're taking the question differently. Uh, for a green community, um, I believe that if we look at federal grant money, there's going to be grant money coming up for electric vehicles. And if you have a capital plan budget for our you know, Board of Health vehicle, our DPW vehicles, fire, not fire trucks, let's avoid that. Uh, they should probably not be electric, but police cars, um, any other cars that we can have green, let's try to phase that out over the next five, 10 years, capital budget. Um, let's look for government grants. Also, I've been saying this for years now, it's a twofer, not only green, Mindy, but blue. We're going to say uh, the waves are coming in, causing erosion. If we were to build the long piers and underneath the piers, I got friends of mine who work for Alden Labs out in uh, Worcester, you can put uh, blue technology under them. When the waves come in, it creates energy. It's clean. It's safe. There's no uh, no issue with that. And we keep the money in house. It also creates a tourist attraction. So let's work on those things uh, where there's grants, where we can have a peer that people come and at the same time, you know, go more towards green and blue energy. Um, helps everyone out that way. Michael, we start with you this time. We still face a shortage of affordable housing, uh, which has been exacerbated by the economic consequences of the pandemic. What steps in cooperation with local organizations and the state government should the town take to address this problem? So affordable housing, last I checked, we were just under a thousand units short of the, uh, of the number. Now I know they built that new unit up on, um, off of Worcester Court. Uh, behind kind of cappies in the bank there where the open lot is. Um, it's not enough. And what's going to end up happening is as long as we don't hit our quota of the affordable housing, then um, builders can come in and, uh, and kind of push the projects along by adding some affordable housing. And the new units don't take up for the new um, full price units that are going in like off of Worcester Court and uh, Alma, they're putting in, I don't know, 24, 28 units and a handful are affordable. That doesn't really help our affordable housing situation enough. And it also takes away from the, uh, the ecosystem, the salamanders, the turtles, all there on Long Pond. So there has to be a, a way that we can get more affordable housing, but keep with the character of Falmouth and uh, not not do too much harm uh, to the environment. It's kind of a, a juggling act and it's difficult, um, but if elected, I would work with uh, you know planning board, zoning board, uh, local builders, try to figure out how we can make this happen. We do have space in Falmouth. We just have to use it properly. Angela, same question. Yeah, thank you. I have been a member of the Falmouth Affordable Housing Committee for a while now. And one of the things that I took lead on just a few months ago was chairing a working group where we we're looking at more revenue sources for affordable housing. So part of the issue that we have in town is that there is a limited amount of funds, obviously, for affordable housing. But the way that they are put into the Falmouth Affordable Housing Fund, there's limited options of what we can do with that money. We basically have to wait for a developer to come in and say they want to build affordable housing. So part of what I've been doing with my working group is looking at additional revenue sources to add money to the for Falmouth Affordable Housing Fund that will allow us to diversify the type of projects for affordable housing. Housing. For example, being able to take funds to renovate old buildings, uh, to renovate old homes so that we don't have to build new affordable housing, that we can just retrofit what we already have. That would obviously be more economic and that would also keep the character of Falmouth. As Mr. Halen said, it's very important that we do that. And so if we're able to just upgrade old homes or retrofit old buildings instead of having to build new things, that's uh, a much more efficient and economic way for us to build our affordable housing stock. Uh, next question is a question from the public and Angela, we start with you. Would you support a change in the structure of the select board, increasing the number of members from five, <clears throat> excuse me, five elected at large to seven elected by region or precinct with the purpose of improving representation and opportunity for engagement of all citizens from our diverse villages? That's a very interesting question. I appreciate whoever sent that in. I think that quite often 
we need to look at the way that our government is structured and make sure that it is still working for us in the way that we want it to. Is it still being representative of us? Do we still feel confident in it? And I know that at one point, Falmouth, we had only three select board members. And so now we've moved to five. And so I would definitely be open to discussing seven or more, whatever we think we may need to do for the, the benefit of the town. Um, in, in these discussions, I would definitely ask what would be the benefit? How would we structure it and make sure that we were on the same page moving forward? Um, but I would definitely be open to those conversations because I would love to hear the point of view of someone who thinks that that might be a better option for us. Right, Michael Halen, same question. Um, yeah, we had this question last year, I think, so it's not fair that I've already had it. But um, I was all for it last year. I'm for it this year. Um, I believe uh, that we're in different precincts, so we can just do it now and just both get in and call it a day. Um, I believe that the select board currently is from – um, you know, different precincts, not all from one precinct, but I do know that people in town feel uh, right or wrong that certain areas get preferential treatment. And you'll hear a lot of town meeting where someone says, oh, why are you putting this in this section? Why are you putting this here? Um, if we had seven select members from different areas of town, then you, th that would kind of go away because you would have representational government in each of those towns like we do town meeting. Um, it's kind of ironic that we have representational town meeting, but not representational select board. It's kind of a, a mix of, a, of democracies here. I'm all for it. And um, I, I will say this, is that um, I live in West Falmouth and I've been very public uh, supporting those in East Falmouth, T-Ticket, the Heights. Um, anyone who needs my help over the years, uh, you know, I, I've made a name of, of going out there and helping out anybody who needs anything in any part of town. So even if we didn't go to that model, it wouldn't affect how I would um, help lead this community. But I do understand where the concerns is and I don't see a huge issue with doing it that way. And um, thank you. Right. Uh, we're gonna move to closing comments now. Two minutes and Michael Halen, we start with you. Thank you so much, Mindy. Uh, once again, FCTV, League of Women Voters. I forgot to thank Bob. Um, Bob did our thing, uh, our candidate statements, and Bob's working all the time. And uh, thank you, Bob, for that. And Tony, who's doing stuff behind the scenes that anyone else I missed. Um, I'm Michael Halen. I, I was born here in 1980, Falmouth Hospital, Falmouth High School, 98. Uh, went off. I worked for a while, came back. Um, I was married. We were living in Norwood. And as soon as we had our first daughter, I said, we got to go back to Falmouth. It's the best. We came back here, and ever since, uh, it's like I never left. I love this community. Um, my sister lives here, my, my nephew, my niece, my parents still live here. Um, I know we all bleed maroon, but I bleed maroon. Uh, I, I love Falmouth. And um, I just want everyone to know that win or lose, I'm always going to be there. Give me a call, text me if you need help. I'll be there. I hope you all vote. I hope you all stay safe. Um, I wanted to, to thank everyone here and uh, thank you. Um, to Anna Lay, Anna Lee. I'm, sorry. I'm trying Angela. my best, yeah. but thank you so much for being here uh, and, and having this debate and forum. And that is all. Thank you all. Thank you. Anjali, Anjali, your closing comments, two minutes. Yes, I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters, Mindy, and the public, Mr. Halen, for being here as well. Um, I was not born in Falmouth. Uh, I was not raised even on the East Coast, but I came to Falmouth for the first time in 2011 for a summer job, and I just kept coming back. I fell in love with Falmouth immediately and knew that this was my place. Uh, I had no control over where I was born or where I was raised, but my first trip to Falmouth, I said, this is, this is my home. This is where I'm supposed to be. And I have been coming back until I was able to be here full time. And I've purchased a home with my husband in East Falmouth at Jenkins Pond, Precinct 9. And we plan to be here. We plan to be here for the long haul. I have been involved in this community and in other communities that I've lived. I truly believe in public service. And that is why I'm running for this position is that I want to serve the community that I love. And so I thank everyone for their time today and I hope to earn your vote on May 18th. Great. Thank you. Angela Scott Price and Michael Halen, both of thank, you thank you for being here with us this evening. We really appreciate that. Um, now we're gonna bring on Select Board Chair, Megan English Braga, who's gonna give us an overview of the various governing bodies 
in Falmouth. Megan? There we go. <laughs> I was say, still getting used to the Zoom technology here. <laughs> I was hanging out in the waiting room, but listening to the, the whole um, program. So it was really wonderful. So I don't know, Mindy, did you, I'll just dive right in. How dive about right that? in, go okay. for it. Great. Um, just a huge thank you to the League of Women Voters, um, to FCTV, for putting this together tonight to um, all of uh, the candidates who put their names forward for any position, but particularly to Angela and to Mike, um, who had that opportunity this evening to, um, you know, really answer some questions from the public and a huge thanks to the folks who sent those questions in. Um, so I just wanted to start by reminding um, folks, because I know I needed this bit of information um, when I first started to get involved um, with the town that we have opportunities for um, residents to be involved in many, many ways, both as members of appointed committees uh, where you don't have to run, you put your name in, you apply, um, and you come before, uh, generally the select board is the appointing authority and you can really, take a deep dive into any subject that um, is close to your heart, you know, whether it is a finance committee, um, which plays a pivotal role um, in really um, overseeing our budgets, or if it is, um, and I'm gonna, you are have to forgive me if my dog barks in a minute, that might happen. Um, no children tonight, but a dog. So there's always something on Zoom. Um, so, um, you can, you know, do finance committee. There are committees for uh, affordable housing around issues of uh, diversity and equity, um, you know, around coastal resiliency. So there are many ways for folks to become engaged. Tonight, what we're talking about are elected positions. And so there are specific elected positions. Um, and uh, we've heard from candidates for, uh, you know, one board tonight, and I'll start with the select board. Um, and that is the board that I have had the great honor of um, serving on for the last five years. Um, and that board is the primary board to set, it's the executive board for the town of Falmouth, and it sets policy uh, for the town. And it um, sets policy really in, um, you know, a wide range of areas. And uh, one of them, you know, the primary one being, we re and when you talked about it tonight, um, the issues of budget. So the capital budget, um, you know, what are we gonna buy? How are we gonna improve facilities and when, as well as the operating budget? You know, what positions are we going to create? How will we fill them? What will the pay be for those positions? Um, and so the select board uh, really has the ability to, um, and is charged with the responsibility of setting that policy. Each year we meet, we create a five-year strategic plan, um, and we talk about what are the main objectives um, that we want to see a focus on in our community. Um, and so individuals can come to all of our meetings, you know, for all of the boards and the committees that happen in this town, anyone, particularly right now, one of the silver linings of COVID is that you can participate in um, watching and adding your thoughts, um, your comments to any committee or board uh, really via Zoom. So it's a wonderful time for folks if they haven't been able to engage um, to do so, because right now you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Um, so that is the select board and that's a position that Mike and Angela have put themselves forward for. Um, and good luck to both of you. I think one of the things that we hope people do and that the league has really done so well is to try and remind us that as citizens, it is our responsibility to be involved in civic engagement, to educate ourselves, um, to understand who we're voting for and what we're asking them to do really on our behalf. Um, and there are so many ways, it's as simple as going online and and taking a look at what each of these boards and committees are charged with. Um, and you know, for folks who want to take a deeper dive, they can reach out to the chairs or members of those committees and ask specific questions. 
Um, so, so that is for the select board. Um, I know we don't have contested races, but I will point out um, the other races that you are going to hear the recordings for um, later on. Uh, I think after this, you'll hear those individuals come forward. Um, and so, you know, the other is the Falmouth Public Library Board of Trustees, and that is a seven member board. Um, and, you know, really that board is the link, I think, um, between the town of Falmouth, between the community and the library. And really they take a look and set policy for um, how we are gonna steward our libraries, which are such an incredibly important asset for the town of Falmouth. Um, and, you know, I said this before, particularly during COVID, our libraries have been a lifeline for a lot of families, um, you know, particularly in the beginning where there was just, there was such a small amount of interaction outside of our homes to be able to go and the library uh, staff, along with obviously the assistance and guidance of the trustees was really nimble enough to um, pretty quickly get back on their feet and figure out how can we get resources into the hands of individuals, into the hands of families with children who've read every single book in your house five times and you're desperate for um, something fresh and new. And they were able to do that. So. Um, you know, lots of important decisions are made by the trustees. We have a wonderful system, but many of our facilities are, are kind of aging for our libraries. So that's something that the trustees really take a look at. Where are we going to make improvements? How are we going to shift resources? Um, so they do an incredibly important service for the town. Um, next, we also have the planning board. Um, those individuals are elected for a three-year term, just like the select board. Um, it is, uh, uh, you know, an organization that I really hope people take a look and go on their website and look at the local comprehensive plan. It has a boring name, but it is a fascinating document. And the planning board worked for a long time. I mean, what that plan does is really lay out a vision for our community. So if you want to kind of be inspired for what the town could be, go and take a look at that. Um, the planning board, um, just sort of the, the dry sense of what they do is they make recommendations for the long-term growth of the town. They review um, site plans and special permits. Um, and they work with the planning, uh, the town planner and the planning department um, to really sort of, um, you know, guide the way development is going to happen. Um, and so that doesn't sound exciting, but it really is. Um, they are currently working and have been for a while on this concept of a Davis Straits reset, you know, really re-envisioning what Davis Straits could be. How could we redesign it for it to be more livable, more walkable, to have more housing, um, to have more green space, to be more accessible for people who don't have vehicles. So fascinating work that the planning board does. Um, and again, anyone can, um, they are always looking to solicit input. I think right now they're looking for people to answer uh, questions on their survey about Davis Strait. So um, a real opportunity for the public to engage with the planning board in various ways to think about what we want our community to look like. I think I heard that come up tonight, um, you know, how important the character of our community is. Um, and, you know, the way development occurs is directly connected to what our town is going to look like, who it's going to draw into it, what businesses are going to want to come here or expand here. Um, and that is really the purview of um, the planning board. And so an incredibly important work that they do. Um, I think we also just talked a little bit about housing. And I know I heard the candidates speak about it. It is a perennial challenge. It is one of the biggest challenges for um, the town of Falmouth is to have affordable housing, to find places for individuals who work here, who want to age here, raise families here, to be able to afford to live. Um, Falmouth Housing Authority uh, really speaks directly to meeting the needs of some of our most vulnerable residents. Um, and it is, um, it is governed by a state statute and it does take a look at ensuring safe, decent, um, affordable housing. And it is a group that works 
in close concert with a number of other um, organizations and agencies here uh, in town as well as um, sort of on the state level. And so incredibly challenging to find housing for individuals um, in Falmouth on the Cape. It's a regional challenge. And again, it goes to, you know, what kind of community do we want to be? Do we want to welcome a diverse group of individuals in terms of age, in terms of economic standing, in terms of ability and need? Um, or do we just want to, um, you know, be a place that is a, a retirement location? I mean, I think the thing that makes people want to retire here is the vibrancy and the diversity of our community. And, and to hold on to that, housing is a huge piece of it. Um, and so affordable, the affordable housing, excuse me, the Falmouth Housing Authority um, uh, really focuses in on meeting those needs of, of our residents. Um, trying to think, do we have one, one more? Or did I get them all already? Oh, school committee, oh my goodness. How could I ever forget that? Uh, it's a mental block because um, it's school vacation week and I'm trying to find childcare for my, my daughter while working full time. So I've, I've blocked that out. But um, school committee, um, nine member uh, committee really works with the superintendent, the administration of the schools, um, the staff of the schools to guide our school, our public school system. Um, again, one of those very, large pieces of our, not only our budget, um, education is incredibly expensive. Um, and so it is a big piece of where our tax dollars go, but more importantly, it's a big piece of what makes us the community that we are. Um, and so looking at both kind of the facilities management piece, as well as pedagogy, as well as taking a look at, are we meeting the needs of all of our students and wherever they're coming from? Obviously this last 13 months now um, has been an enormous uphill challenge for our school committee and our school department, um, adjusting, adapting to COVID. Um, so those members make really hard decisions. And my hat goes off to them this year in particular because no decision they made was gonna be one that made everyone happy, right? If we go remote, that's a huge challenge for a lot of families and, it, and it's, it upsets um, the rhythm and, and work schedules. If they wanted kids to go into school, folks were understandably concerned about public health issues. So there was no decision that they could make this year that was gonna make everyone happy, but they made the decisions. Um, and they are really charged with uh, leading and guiding that piece of our community. Um, so, you know, I just, I guess I wanna close by saying, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg about what these different boards and committees do. And the goal is to just get people interested. Um, you know, I am a firm believer that if you don't um, engage, you can't complain. And I love to complain. So that's why I'm part of why I'm engaged. But I hope folks really take that to heart. You know, and I don't mean that in a negative way. If you want to be you know, you want to sort of have your concerns and your complaints heard, you have to be engaged in some way. And there are so many ways to do that. And the first and easiest way is to just attend, log in, go to the Falmouth, um, you know, town website, find the Zoom links, log in. You don't have to say anything. You can just, you know, sort of listen, maybe make a public comment, watch on FCTV. You know, so many of these committee meetings are gonna be streamed live. You can go back and look at ones from the past but be engaged, find the thing that you're interested in that moves you, that you care about in this community and find a way to make your voice heard. Um, so huge thanks to the league. Thank you, Mindy, um, for, for uh, shepherding us through this conversation. Thanks to FCTV. I um, mean, I guess I would just end by saying, I hope people stay healthy, they stay safe they stay engaged and, th and that they vote because that really is the most important piece. Um, so thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Megan, thanks for that. We appreciate that. And we should mention if you missed any of this, not to worry, FCTV will, will be running this program in the days leading up to the election. Uh, I wanna thank you for, for staying with us this evening. Stay tuned. We're gonna go now to the pre-recorded statements uh, from those who are unopposed. Thanks.
Hi, my name is Michael Galasso. I'm running for a position on the Falmouth, Authority, Falmouth Housing Authority, a board of commissioners who oversee the uh, Falmouth Housing Authority. Uh, there are five members. I'm running for a five-year term. Uh, my background is I grew up here in Falmouth, went to Mullen Hall and Intermediate School. That's what we called Morris Pond before it was called Morris Pond and graduated from Lawrence High School. I've lived in the house right in front of Lawrence School since 1961. I went to Boston College, graduated there, went out to San Diego and went to graduate school at San Diego State University in specializing in urban planning. In 1986, I formed the real estate development company with my business partner, Jim Barone. We've been together for a little bit over 30 years now. We specialize in developing workforce affordable housing and revitalizing urban neighborhoods in San Diego and Sacramento. Um, developed a, a little bit over 1,200 uh, affordable workforce housing units in that period of time. In 2008, I came back to Falmouth um, to take care of my mom. And I was been working uh, with a nonprofit, renovating housing in uh, the vineyard and then acquired and renovating two and three family homes in Brockton and New Bedford and renovating those for first time home buyers. I also converted the old library in Oak Bluffs on Circuit Avenue into three units of affordable housing. So I'm currently working on a 10 unit affordable housing project in North Falmouth. It will be two and three bedrooms that should start construction in the next few months. So my whole professional career has been devoted to developing affordable housing. And I think I'm a good fit for the Falmouth Housing Authority. I'm also the past chairman of the Falmouth Economic and Industrial Corporation. Uh, we renovated why I was the chairman, the uh, bus station, the old train station on Depot Ave. We were able to obtain a, a million and a half grant from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation in order to renovate that that building, we currently, we meaning the Falmouth EDIC, currently own and operate that under a 99 year ground lease with Mass DOT. And we're currently in the process of doing a master plan for the station and for the two acres of land around it. Uh, I was also involved uh, as a chairman of the EDIC in developing with Citizens Energy, that's Joe Kennedy's company, the six megawatt uh, solar project at the landfill. We took the landfill, which was costing the town a little bit over $100,000 a year and turned that into a solar farm that now produces about $750,000 worth of energy savings for the town's municipal buildings. So my experience is putting together very complicated financial packages for the development of affordable housing. And I believe I can help the Falmouth Housing Authority, which is one of the largest owners of affordable apartments in Falmouth, um, renovate their, their, their properties, expand, add more units, and improve the maintenance of them. I'm, I'm bringing my 30 years of experience to the Housing Authority in order to uh, accomplish that. I've been able to secure numerous sources of funding for the affordable housing projects that I have developed. Uh, we would like to make the housing units that the Housing Authority owns more energy efficient, uh, improve the living conditions for the current residents. The town recently adopted its uh, housing production plan, which calls for 72 new units of affordable housing each year over the next 10 years. And it's gonna take uh, an effort by all of us in order to accomplish that goal. It's very important that we are able to provide housing in our community for the people who work here, whether they're school teachers, nurses, firemen, policemen, people who work in the retail establishment, the restaurants, the hotels, the shopping centers. We desperately need more housing. And with my experience, I believe that I can bring to the housing authority the ability to expand the number of units that they have, renovate the current ones that they have. So um, I would like to ask for your vote on May 18th for Michael Galasso for the Board of Commissioners of the Falmouth Housing Authority. Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. Hi, my name is Lucy Helfrich and I'm a first time candidate for library trustee. 
I've always loved libraries. My hometown library was a fabulous institution. I remember its enormous children's room with high ceilings and many big windows that let in the sunshine. I was a voracious early reader and I would check out a dozen or more books at a time to take home to read. I'd return the next week and do that all again. After college, when I moved to Falmouth in 1987, one of the first things on my to-do list was to visit the library and get a new library card. Over these last three decades, I've been an avid reader and library patron. My husband is too, along with our three now grown kids whom we encourage from babyhood to visit, use and value the libraries. Falmouth libraries are a wonderful community resource that should be cherished and protected. They provide a wide variety of excellent services and programs. I have been impressed with the expansion of the main library, the improvements to the North and East branches, the meeting of challenges and opportunities posed by new information technology and the growth in services for patrons of all ages. I also recognize and appreciate the library's skilled, committed, friendly and helpful staff members who keep the buildings and all their offerings running smoothly. During the last difficult year, Falmouth libraries have been steadfast in their mission, continuing to offer materials lending and virtual programming when necessary, but also being safely open to the public when possible, providing members of our community access to important support and resources throughout the coronavirus pandemic. I commend this great work. A little more information about me. My volunteer experiences in Falmouth include serving as a VIPS volunteer for many years with a stint on the Mullenhall Elementary School Council and several years as treasurer of the Mullenhall PTO. I also served on the board of Falmouth Flash, the girls youth lacrosse league in town. While I don't have extensive involvement on volunteer boards, I've worked over the last 20 years as a staff member of the 300 Committee Land Trust, a local organization like the library that's committed to the Falmouth community. I've had the terrific opportunity to collaborate with, witness in action, and learn from a dedicated and very effective board of trustees. If I'm elected a Falmouth Library trustee, I will do my best to embrace and emulate many of my 300 Committee board members' best qualities. Commitment to the cause, staying informed and engaged, working well with others, being a good listener, asking informed and sometimes difficult questions, and always striving to carefully and wisely allocate limited financial resources. Falmouth Libraries are key centers of learning and enjoyment. As a library trustee, I will embrace the role as advocate of these great institutions, and I will work hard to broaden everyone's access to the growing array of valuable library services. Thank you for listening, and I hope I can count on your vote this May 18th. Hi, I am Kathy Mount, running for library trustee. And I would like to thank FCTV and the League of Women Voters for giving me this opportunity to use their public channel to videotape the candidate statement. Also, many thanks to Bob Fenstermaker for all his time in contacting the candidates and coordinating and arranging the slots and also for his patience. Thanks also to those of you who voted for me three years ago when I first ran for library trustee. During the past three years, I've learned a great deal about how our library functions. We are fortunate to have both an outstanding director in Linda Collins and her assistant, Jennifer Woodward. Working with them and other trustees has made my experience positive and enjoyable. My particular responsibility on the trustee board is with the Buildings and Grounds Committee. You might have noticed the boarded up windows on the Catherine Lee Bates side of the library. Work on the library building is a town responsibility. The library has been communicating with the town since 2019 about the need to restore the windows. Progress is being made and it is my hope that this will be accomplished soon. The approval of the use of library property for various functions is also in the realm of the Building and Grounds Committee. One success in this area that so many of us have enjoyed was the placement of picnic tables on the library property. This idea originated to help with outdoor seating during the worst of the COVID pandemic. 
When the trustees meet on April 20th, this will be on our agenda and I will support continuing to have the picnic tables out for public use. Before closing, I want to compliment the entire library staff for their outstanding work during COVID. The challenge of keeping the library open and then close and then open again would seem overwhelming, but we're all met with dedication to the job and with care for the community. Our library exhibited amazing resilience in finding ways to serve the public during COVID and will continue to do so as the disease hopefully gets fully under control. And some, I would appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve the Falmouth community as a library trustee. Thank you. Hello, I'm Charlotte Harris. I'm running for the planning board. I hope you're planning to vote on May 18th and have a plan for that. I'm running unopposed, um, but I'd still appreciate uh, your vote. Um, the planning board is responsible for long range comprehensive planning and a review of site plans. When people wanna build something, uh, not necessarily residential houses that are well within the bylaws, they're going to have to come to us for approval. We get complaints that we're, that it's slow, it is slow. We try to streamline the process, but we try to really carry out our responsibility, which is to approve things that contribute to the health and safety and character of the town. Our big projects over the last couple of years have been the accessory apartment bylaw, the solar overlay district and design guidelines. I think you're probably aware of the accessory apartment bylaw. It's been quite a success. The solar overlay district uh, has just barely gotten underway and design guidelines also are barely beginning to have an effect. We've had a couple of controversial projects that you might've paid attention to. A developer, um, many times people have tried to develop the old Nautilus and the dome. We now have an approved plan for the Nautilus and the dome. There was a great deal of public concern and input and it's now uh, in court. We hope that that's going to come to fruition. The Cape Cod Country Club Solar Array recently uh, created a great deal of interest and concern, and it was eventually approved and is moving forward to town meeting, where we hope it will get the approval that it needs. Looking ahead, the projects that we're going to be working on will complete recodification. People who've tried to use our bylaws are aware that it is an enormous th thing. Um, uh, it's, it's unwieldy. It's been growing for decades. It's been restructured. It hasn't been changed, but it's been restructured so that it's easier to use. And that too will be going to town meeting probably in November. Multifamily housing has been a goal of ours for some time as a way to bring under local control the 40B plans that are, are uh, frequently uh, a concern to us. So we hope that our new multifamily bylaw will be something that you like, something that you're going to uh, see as being a great enhancement it restricts building these big projects, potentially big, they could be any size, but potentially big projects in zones that are already scheduled as business to zone. So it will not be in agricultural or in residential zones. And we hope that that makes it very approvable. We'll also be working to complete form-based zoning, which is a complicated idea. And we hope that you're going to come to the hearings that we'll be holding and be paying attention the material on the planning board's website. Right now there's a survey there that you can take to register your opinions. We've had other surveys that you have uh, put into so that we know that your idea, the public's idea of uh, Falmouth's character is, this is no surprise, is it looks like Cape Cod housing. And that's good. We think that that's fine. We're going to continue to be streamlining things. And if what we'd really like is when we ask for input, that you react, that you let us know what you're thinking because you're the people we're trying to, to please and we're always seeking public input. Um, I hope you give me a vote on May 18th. I'll appreciate it, it will certainly cheer me on and it will keep our team together, thank you. Hi, my name is Bob Leary and I'm running for re-election to the planning board. I've been on the planning board now, for, uh, this will be uh, 12 years and to me, it's been one of the most uh, enjoyable and one of the most important things that I've done. Uh, Falmouth is an incredibly 
wonderful town. And I have, have tried to do my best to keep it that way. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, I saw before I was on the board that I didn't like to, that was going on. And I wanted to have an impact on how to keep Falmouth as unique and as wonderful and uh, vibrant a community as it is. And as a planner, that's what you have to do. You have to kind of balance development with uh, maintaining what makes a town special. And I think I've done that over the years and I'd like to continue doing that. We have a lot of work to do. We've got uh, some big initiatives coming along with multi-housing and Davis Straits uh, redevelopment. And I wanna be part of that decision and I can be part of that decision-making process with your vote on May 18th. Thank you. Hello, my name is William Dorfner and I'm excited about the opportunity to serve the Falmouth community as a member of the school committee. Most of my work career has been spent working with youth. As a full-time youth director, I had the opportunity to work with students and their families through fun and exciting youth programs, weekly lessons, and mission trips. I also helped young people work through the difficult times in their lives and helped parents who were trying to navigate through their children's teenage years. During my career as a police officer, I worked as a school resource supervisor and school district liaison officer. I worked in some of the largest schools in the country, ensuring the safety of our students and working to foster positive relationships between the children, faculty, community, and the police. During this time, I partnered with the community to develop reading programs, bowling events, and movie nights. I worked with the schools to develop summer camp programs so parents had a place to bring their children when school was out. And I partnered with local colleges and companies like Boeing to develop a program for at-risk teens where we encouraged them to follow their dreams and not allow circumstances in their lives to keep them from being the very best version of themselves. That brings me to why I'm running for school committee. There is no doubt that this has been a tough and unexpected year for everyone. But if we are to teach our children to overcome any obstacle that comes their way, then we need to model that. I know the school committee and leadership did what they felt was best. That does not mean that we shouldn't look at what was done and ask how it could have been done better. Some students thrived in a remote or hybrid model, but that does not mean that some students weren't left behind. There were many students in our community whose parents still had to go to work every day throughout the pandemic, and they didn't have the option of working from home. Healthcare is one of the largest industries on the Cape, and those workers were at work every day on the front line of the pandemic. Grocery store workers still had to be at work every day so we could all buy food. Police, EMS, and firefighters can't work remotely. Many of these workers have children in our schools. I have spoken with parents and listened to their stories of how their children have really struggled in the Falmouth schools, and not just throughout this past year. I've watched a single mom working in healthcare try to advocate for her son who was struggling, only to be told by the district that they couldn't or wouldn't meet her requests, or even ignore her at times, while other students were getting twice as much in-person instruction. Simply stated, the actions taken by the school district, even with the best of intentions, left some students behind, and that is simply not acceptable. Falmouth deserves better than that. As a member of the committee, I will make sure that we consider the needs of children from all walks of life in every decision we make. We can't always control what gets thrown our way, but we can control how we react to it. A leader is always examining their own decisions and actions and striving to improve at every turn. A leader is forward thinking and plans and prepares for the future, whatever that may bring. A leader places others before themselves, and by doing so, a leader earns the trust of others. As I stated at the beginning of this, I believe that a high quality public school system is central to a thriving and vibrant community. If given the opportunity to serve on the Falmouth School Committee, I will work hard to ensure that we as a committee earn the trust of our citizens and that our schools are meeting the needs of every student in our town. Thank you for your time to listen to this message. Again, my name is William Dorfner and I would appreciate your vote for Falmouth School Committee on May 18th.
Hi, I'm Kelly Welch. I'm running for my fourth time to be a member of the Falmouth School Committee. In my seven years serving, because my first term was only one year, I have been chair twice, vice chair twice, and served on, I think, almost every one of the subcommittees. Um, just a little bit about me. I run a small nonprofit here in Falmouth called Team Maureen. We do cervical cancer and HPV prevention and education. I've worked in education-based nonprofits and uh, public schools for my entire career. I even used to be a seventh grade science and social studies teacher, but definitely my most, most cherished role is that I'm a mom of two incredible kids who attend public, public schools. Uh, so it's sort of a strange position to be in, um, being in an uncontested race. I've had this happen to me before, and granted, I am thrilled to be able to start planning to come back for another three-year term and continue working with such incredibly dedicated administration and staff in, in the school district and also a wonderful school committee team. But it is uh, a little bit weird and a strange part of me does wish that every race in Falmouth was a contested one because I know there are incredible people who could bring amazing perspectives and different experiences to all the positions in town. So although it's an uncontested race, I'm grateful to be part of it. And I hope that um, you'll turn out on May 18th and, and vote um, hopefully for me, but especially for the other positions that are contested and the local precinct meeting, uh, local precincts where um, you know, your town meeting members are elected to, to represent you. Thank you for your time in watching this and thanks for taking the time on the 18th to vote.